Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain a few simple boundary descriptors. Boundary descriptors are entities which allow us to calculate the property of that object and it can be used to compare between two different boundaries to determine whether the boundaries are same or different. The first boundary descriptor that we are going to look at is the length of the boundary. And if you want to find the length of a boundary, then the number of pixels along the boundary gives a rough estimation of its length. Okay. And for a chain coded curve with unit spacing in both directions, the number of vertical and horizontal components plus row 2 times the number of diagonal components gives the exact length. Suppose you, this is a boundary. Okay. And if you are using the 8 directional chain code, then this will be a 0 and this will be 6 and this segment will be again 0, this will be 6 and this will be 7. Okay. And for horizontal and vertical components, we will be taking the length as 1. So this is 1, this is 1, this segment is 1 and this segment is 1. And the length of the diagonal component is taken as root 2. And if you add all these values, you will get the length of the boundary. And the second one is the diameter of a boundary. If you want to calculate the diameter of a boundary, then you calculate the distance between every pair of points along the boundary, that is PA and PJ. And among those distances, you take the maximum value. And that, that will be the diameter of that boundary. Imagine that you have a boundary like this. And you want to calculate the diameter of this boundary then you will take each and every point over the boundary and you will calculate the distance between them okay you will be calculating the distance between this point and this point this point and this point and etc finally you can calculate the maximum distance and that will be the distance between two extreme points on the boundary so in this case these two points will be the two extreme points then the distance between those two extreme points are called the diameter of this boundary okay this d represents the distance measure and it can be the euclidean distance measure or it can be the city block distance measure or it can also be the chessboard distance measure it, the choice of d depends on the what kind of distance measuring metric we are using for our application and another simple boundary descriptor is the major axis of the boundary the definition of major axis of a boundary goes like this that is the line segment connecting two extreme points that comprise the diameter is called the major axis of the boundary okay so uh, it is just like the diameter that is if you have a boundary like this two extreme points and the diameter comprises the major axis okay and the minor axis uh, is a little bit different compared to the major axis and the definition goes like this the minor axis of a boundary is defined as the line perpendicular to the major axis length is such that the line passing through the outer four points of intersection of the boundary with the two axes completely encloses the boundary that means imagine that you have a boundary like this I'm drawing a simple structure to make the discussion easier this is the major axis that we have seen already and to define the minor axis we need to satisfy two conditions the first one is the minor axis should be perpendicular to the major axis two extreme points of the major axis as well as the two extreme points of the minor axis should be four points on a box that encloses this boundary completely so I'm drawing that box so the minor axis should be perpendicular to the major axis as well as the length is such that the box enclosing the entire boundary should touch the extremes of minor axis as well as the major axis and the next one is the eccentricity that is the ratio of major axis to the minor axis is called the eccentricity okay and the other one is the curvature and the curvature is defined as the rate of change of slope to calculate the curvature the boundary is traversed in the clockwise direction and a vertex p is said to be part of a convex segment if the change in slope p is non-negative that is positive otherwise p is said to be belonging to a segment that is concave this is our image axis 
and this is x and this is y suppose that I have a line segment like this okay and this is the point P and first you have to calculate the slope of the first line then calculate the slope of the second line let this be theta 2 and this be theta 1 and if you calculate the difference between theta 2 and theta 1 and if it is a positive number and this will be part of a convex line segment that is this condition and if this is negative that means this angle is lesser than the first angle then that will be a part of a concave line segment okay that is another boundary descriptor called the curvature and the next one is the shape number of a boundary and we have already seen it that is the shape number of a boundary is defined as the first difference or the difference code of smallest magnitude okay so suppose that this is my boundary if I am defining a four directional chain code then this will be 0 3 2 and 1 the difference code is calculated by taking the number of directional changes needed to get from one direction to the next direction on the chain code if this is how the directional numbers are defined then this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 and the first number is taken by taking the difference between the last number and the first number that is in order to get from 1 to 0 how many directional changes are required so we have 1 then 2 then 3 so 3 directional changes are required that is this number 3 again from 0 to 3 this is 0 then you count 1 2 3 so you again require 3 so you can calculate the entire code in order to get the shape number you will have to consider this as a circular sequence then you take the smallest magnitude integer from that circular sequence and one way of finding it will be bringing maximum number of zeros to the beginning and as this code doesn't have any zeros so we will be writing the number as it is and in the next example you can find the chain code and you find the difference code and in the difference code you can see that the number will be minimum if I bring this zero to the beginning and to find the shape number you will have to bring this zero to the beginning and write the next numbers as it is and imagining this number is in circular order this applies for finding the shape numbers of all other shapes and you can try it yourself okay and we have to define one more term here that is the order of a shape number so order n of a shape number is the number of digits in the representation and you have to have n as an even number if it is a closed boundary so in the figure it is shown that every possible shapes for a given shape number and this is the only possible shape for order 4 and this is the only possible shape for order 6 and these are the shapes for order 8 okay and i hope it is clear thank you